Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, the other day I was down here by my neighbor Dave's dock and I was just throwing a lure around because I thought I saw a fish out here in his water. And I got I got snagged on a oyster or rock or something. And I didn't want to break off the line because I had just tied an FG knot and I was so proud of it. I didn't want to have to tie it again. So I like walked over to the other side there and I tried to get out. I walked the other side, tried to get out and it was snagged real good. And Dave says to me, he said, you know, this is what the people in your videos don't see. Well, he cursed me right then and there because this last week has been nothing but an episode of ridiculousness. If you've ever seen ridiculousness on MTV, it's a lot like uh, the millennial version of uh, America's Funniest Home Videos or World's Dumbest. It's just a bunch of people doing a bunch of stupid stuff. Well, today, this week, I'm going to show you all the stupid, dumb things that happened. And it'll make getting snagged on that rock and that oyster <laughs> where that oyster look uh, that'll look ridiculous it's ridiculousness is what it's gonna be all right let's go get ridiculous well first up some fun news I decided to get my six-pack captain's license, or at least attempt to get my six-pack captain's license. So I've decided to do it online, and I sent away for the Mariner's Learning System. And uh, they give you, if you wait a day, they'll, they'll give you a $100 credit, and you can get, uh, basically for free, the books and stuff that come in this cool bag right here. So you can do the class online without the books, but they will give you a, a credit for $100 if you hang out. And they'll send you all this cool stuff, like they will send you... Uh, a chart that you're going to need to do to learn to navigate the waters along with some tools that come with it and there's some cool pencils in there and a pencil sharpener even there and then lots of books and then which are study guides which are really good because um, I don't just like to read stuff online I, I like to watch the videos but then I like to read stuff out of books so for me this is gonna work really well hopefully by the end of the summer I'll have my captain's license we'll see this trip is gonna start out in Davis Canal and I decided to bring uh, two rods with me the first one here I'm using just to uh, see if I can catch some trout and I had a little lure on there and lo and behold as I was just trolling along I did snag my first trout and I was pretty happy about it except for he was a little small but a really nice beautiful fish and you know when you do your first cast and you're just paddling along trying to get to your fishing spot and you catch a fish on the way that's a good that's a good deal so I was like this can be a good week you know I already got a trout <laughs> so obviously I let this little guy go and I thought well I'll just catch another and I cast back out <laughs> and I snagged some of the weeds and it just instantly cut off that lore so i lost the lore which is the first part of ridiculousness that we're gonna go across today so i went and i got my little pink rod and i was like i'm gonna catch some fish with a little pink rod and i'll just put some shrimp i had some fresh shrimp that i got a cleanse i'll show you later uh, that shrimp and i just put it on there and i started pulling in some some fish and i got some black drum um, this one in particular was very impressive so i pulled him up and you know they fight so great black drum just fight so great and they taste great and this one was probably you know he was definitely over 14 inches he might have been 15 inches but uh i had just kind of got out there and i'm like you know what i can get a bigger one uh, i'm gonna let this one go you know <laughs> <laughs> that was my big mistake right there. I could have ended the week with this video right here. We would have ended and not had ridiculousness, but I decided to let him go because I thought I could catch some more. Well, I did not catch any more after that. Uh, in fact, I didn't catch anything else after that because right after I let him go, if you look, uh, probably can't see it at this point, but when my hand moves just to the left of the camera, there is a float in the water. There it is right there, right in the middle of the camera. And that float is a crab trap. And I got snagged on it. And when I was trying to pull the line out, figuring the line would break, the line did not break. But if you look right there, I had had a full pole and now I have half a pole. The pink pole broke. It snapped right there. So I pulled up my anchor because I knew it was there at the bottom of the ocean somewhere. 
And I was hoping maybe it had just, you know, how rods can separate and you can put them back together. And I was hoping that was the case. But then when I pulled it up, I realized that wasn't the case. The, the rod had actually broke. So <laughs> ridiculousness is a brand new pink rod that is now broken. And I was seriously disappointed about that. Um, so I started thinking about it and I knew I had some extra rods. So when I got home, I looked and I realized the old rod, that the old pink rod, now that reel is broken was not actually an original pink rod. I must have at some point broke that pink rod too and put it on this Shakespeare. So now I'm gonna take my new pink reel and put it on my old non-pink rod. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the pipe and pint, and I decided to stop here after school one day. My friend Steve was having a birthday, and we were going to get him some. Now, I don't smoke cigars at all, never, ever, ever, but he does, so I thought I would pick him up. Now, I don't know anything about cigars, but they sure do have a lot of them, so I just, you know, by luck, just decided to pick these Arturo Fuente work of art cigars, which just happened to be sitting there, and I know nothing about cigars, so I'm, I'm sure I'm just, you know, I'll just pick one out randomly, and I happen to get that. Uh, even if it's the best cigar in the whole world. Uh, I didn't say that because I don't smoke cigars, but um, I also walked down the other end and I got a Chupacabra. Uh, just again, by chance, uh, picked one out. Don't know anything about the Maduro wrapper. But what is interesting is that when I went to check out, the woman that works there is actually the wife of the person who charters the cool running fishing boat charters who I've actually gone out with before with Joshua. It was several years ago, but that was interesting. So we're gonna have to follow up on that. Meanwhile, my pen prevail surf rod, which I've had for years, the eye, the first and the second eye had lost the middle part of it. So I took it over to Dutchman's Creek. Now Dutchman's Creek doesn't actually work on uh, rods, but they do um, kind of, I guess lease out to someone who does and so I decided to drop it off to see if I can get it fixed now I've had other eyes fixed on rods before and they'll do the tip for like five dollars and the secondary one for like fifteen dollars or so so like this one was going to actually cost me twenty five dollars for these two but a pen prevail rod can go for like 150 bucks so you know twenty five dollars to get it fixed have it brand new was worth it for me so she wrote down some things and while she was getting that all together I decided to go <laughs> shopping of course because I'm in Dutchman's Creek first of all I Need, I, I know I needed some new uh, trout uh, rigs, so I was going to pick up some of those. I like the ones with the big eyes, because I think the bigger eyes, the better. And I figure I, I better might as well get some gulp to go with it. And I got these. Now, this is cool, because it turns out they actually glow in the dark. <laughs> I don't know why I need that, but I decided to get these glow-in-the-dark ones. Maybe I'll catch some more trout on those. We're going to get out in the canal again later on in the video and see what we can do. And then I decided I was going to pick up one of these birds. Now, this is for Span Spanish mackerel fishing, so I could take it out in the boat and troll with this, and, and it comes with the lure and the bird so we're gonna have to try that out in a in a next video maybe but here's the eyes fixed they looked fabulous for $25 I was seriously happy it was like brand new and shiny now I also stopped at Clem seafood which is right before the if you're coming across you haven't gotten across the bridge yet the old bridge it's right there on the on the right side and they sell mullet like this right here so I was gonna cut this up and I also picked up some fresh shrimp I was talking about um, and for like eight dollars I got this mullet and a, like a pound of shrimp or whatever it was it was pretty pretty good price and really fresh bait uh, so here's the shrimp with the heads on great stuff you know you can cut that up into like almost three four pieces so that that's gonna last a little while and then here's the setup I love this hook this is a rig I use it's a five dot five dot hook on a, on a metal leader and down to a mono line and then here's my FG knot now I'm gonna put a link above to the guy who did this now I had to learn online I have to cut the tag ends there but this is a really strong knot it's for tying braid which I use on my rod to mono and it is super strong and super thin so when it goes through those eyes <laughs> I don't ruin those eyes so I like to put a piece of the big chunk of meat there now what am I gonna catch with this probably sharks right probably sharks maybe rays but I could catch um, a bull drum if there was one around <laughs> not likely but I could or I could catch uh, well I did get a hit and it pulled my rod and then I started to reel it in and I didn't so what else can I catch with that maybe a bluefish a nice big chopper that'd be nice too but I didn't catch anything what I did catch was a whole lot of seaweed it's just been terrible and I have done and I'll put a link to this too a video on how to stay out of the seaweed but sometimes it just gets so bad and we were having this wind coming out of the south and it was like ridiculousness the amount of seaweed this is one cast out there for what two minutes or something like that and all 
this seaweed. And I just, at this point, I gave up. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and deal with this. This is ridiculousness. So I decided to go down to the ICW, the Sheep Island. If you go down to the ICW to the point, but you're on the, on the ICW side as opposed to the ocean side, that's where I was. And I decided I would do two things. First, I'd fish with my glow-in-the-dark <laughs> bait, which I caught nothing with, and also with my little pink rod. Like, I was going to have a little contest to see which was better. But the problem was, this stupid pelican that's here decided, like, he almost ate my GoPro. Did you see him swallow my GoPro? He's trying to take my bait. He's trying to take my chum bag. He's like... I'm like, go away. And every time I caught a fish, I mean, I'd have to like pull it in. Even though I was getting these little croakers, I had to pull it in really fast, fast him because he would chase after it. And I'm like, this pelican is going to get a hook in his mouth. So uh, he's like, he's my new best friend. He won't leave me alone. Here I am again. Look at him right there in the bottom corner. And as soon as I reel in the fish, he's going to come right across and try to get it. And I'm like, no, dude, you can't have my fish. I can't get rid of him either. So I decided to try the trout. I'll just walk up along the shore. I'll throw the lure. And lo and behold, here he comes. So ridiculousness, this pelican is now my best friend. And I'm like, even try to like chase him away. I don't want to harass him, right? But I want him to go away. I don't want him to get a hook in his mouth. I don't want him to get hurt. Anyway, <laughs> I finally gave up. I stopped fishing. I was like, forget this. Maybe he'll go away. Kim went out. She walked down to the other end of the beach. I actually went with her and then I left her there because she spent so much time looking for clams. And so I went back to the boat and the bird was gone. But when I started fishing again, he came back. <laughs> so I just couldn't do it. Meanwhile, Kim came back with a nice bag of clams, which we had that, that night. So you can clam down at the point. That, that part of the island is open for harvesting uh, shellfish at this point right now. So I did that. So I finally ended up back in the Davis Canal and was just like, I'm just going to end this week. I've got to get some fish. I'm going to get some black drum. Had that fresh shrimp. Uh, threw it out there, and I got this little black drum right here. Now, the thing about black drum is they school. So if you catch one, you're probably going to catch more. You're probably going to catch a couple. Now, they do kind of school, as most fish do, in the same size range. So if you catch one 8-inch <laughs> drum like this, you're probably going to catch another 8-inch drum like this, which I did. But I just felt lucky about the spot, so I stuck with it. And pretty soon I had a pretty nice one on there and I started reeling him in and I'm like, this guy's giving me a good fight. Like he's fighting. Look at him coming up now. This was like the beginning of the video that that black drum I had. I'm like, well, if this is like a 14, 15 inch fish, I might just keep this one. <laughs> and he's fighting like it. That's why I like the little pink rod. And I'm glad I replaced the reel to this new rod, which doesn't break when I catch fish, which is really good. But when I got him up in the boat and I measured him, he was just like, not even 14 inches. He was, maybe he was 14 inches. I don't know. If I hold up the, the, the stick to hit and it's just like, uh, and he's wiggling around and it's not like it's a foot, but it might be a little bit more. I'm, I'm not even going to bother with that. So throwing him back. I got to catch one. I like to keep him at 16 inches, something around that size. Then I finally got the hit I was waiting for this whole video all week. Can I please catch a decent fish? The ridiculousness of me not. And look at this fight. I was like, oh, yes, this is finally the black drum. I knew they were schooled up. I knew he was coming in and I'm watching the water and it's breaking and I can see color and I can see him coming up and he's splashing around. I'm like, this is a ginormous fish. <laughs> I pull him up and it wasn't a ginormous fish. <laughs> it was it was two uh, medium sized fish. The bottom one's not bad. He might have been 13 inches. The top one might have been 10, uh, maybe less, but uh, obviously both undersized. So they're going back. So that was my week of ridiculous fishing. <laughs> I'm going to let you vote. Hey, you can vote for the most ridiculous moment out there. And to make it easy, just leave a comment below as to which one of these you think is most ridiculousness. All right, so number one up is pink rod breaks. Yes, the moment I was out in the canal using the pink rod and instead of the line breaking, <laughs> the rod actually broke. And number two, my best friend. If you think my afternoon spent with a pelican was the most ridiculousness moment of this video, then you can vote for that. But there's more. Wait, how about seaweed stops me? Yes, that moment I decided I had to go home because catching a chomper gator amount of seaweed is not much fun. Or you can go with, hey, doubled up. Hey, I thought I had one big fish and I ended up having two. Leave a comment below and I hope your week isn't as ridiculous as mine.